Hi all, I'm Age. Welcome to Liquid Earth. It's a channel all about video and photography, so if that interests you, consider subscribing. Today's video though is all about the DJI MIMO app and all of the features and functions. I'm using the OM4, but it's exactly the same for the Osmo Mobile 3. If you've just acquired one, then go ahead and download the MIMO app, install it and run through the setup. That'll connect it to your camera. Once you've done that, I'm going to press the like on now. And if you're in the video mode or you go straight to the video mode, you're all connected. But if you press the little home button, you might go there to start with. And let's just check out the home screen. So at the top left hand side, you've got your camera and we're going to check out all of the functions. That's your main mode there. On the top right hand side, you've got this little book that'll give you lots of information and a manual and tutorials on your products. And at the bottom in the center is your edit button. If you press that, you can go and edit all of your footage using the Mimo app. And by the way, I've got a separate video on that and lots of other tutorials on the gimbals. At the end of the video, at the bottom right, you can click a little link that will go directly to my playlist. Let's cross out of that and let's go into the camera icon. So that's your main setup. And I'm going to double click the M button just so that I go to horizontal. That's how I mainly like to shoot. And we're going to go through the entire screen and show you absolutely everything. So first of all, on the right hand side, you can scroll through all of your options. So I'm in video mode at the moment. Let's talk about that first of all. At the bottom in the center, you've got your zoom controls. It's got the same functions as using the zoom on your gimbal itself, which is actually more convenient because you're not touching the screen whilst you're recording. But it has the same functions. You can zoom in and out by just scrolling left and right. And there's two little dots and they represent the cameras on your phone. I've got two on the iPhone 11. So the first one is the ultra wide and then I've got the wide or standard. If I go past that and it now says 2.4, 2.5, I'm in digital zooming. And be careful with that a little bit because that's cropping the sensor a little bit. So it's deteriorating the quality of your footage a little bit. So use that sparingly, but when you need it. On the left hand side, there's all of the options that you'll need in the video mode. So you can go back to your home. If you press the little icon that says auto, here's where you can change to manual settings. So if you're familiar with camera settings, you can change your ISO, your shutter and your exposure compensation here. I'm in auto, so that'll take care of all of the settings automatically. Below that, you've got your resolution and frame rate. And here you've got some choices, 720, 1080, which is HD and 2164 K. And then you've got frames per second. If you're unfamiliar with frames per second and resolution, then 4K, 30 frames per second is a pretty good place to start. Below that, you've got beauty mode. Now, if I change my resolution to 1080 HD, 30 frames per second, now I can use the glamour effects and you can change some settings and that's going to smooth out skin. It's great for selfies and things like that where you want to smooth out and add some glamour effects. Obviously, I don't need it. But I'm going to leave that off for the minute. And then below that, you've got settings, the little three dots. So at the very top, you've got your flash. You can turn that on or off. You can change your white balance manually here. At the moment, because I'm in auto settings, then I can't make any changes to that. And then I can add a grid. Now, if I press the grid lines icon, you can turn the grid off, keep it on, or pull it in with diagonals. Now, that's good if you want to compose your videos with things like rules of thirds, etc. Let's leave that off for the minute. Then you've got your gimbal icon. Now that allows you to change the recording modes and video modes on your gimbal itself. By default, you're in the follow mode. With the follow mode, you can tilt up and down. You can pan left and right, but you can't roll because it's locked it. But it's gonna keep all of the footage, whether you're tilting or panning, nice and rock steady and smooth. Next one down is tilt locked. So this time you can't go up and down. I can still turn left and right, so it locks the tilt. Great if you're following people and you want to keep the horizon in the same place. Then you've got FPV mode, that's first person view, and that unlocks all of the axis on the gimbal. So you can turn, you can go up and down, and you can even rotate if you want some special effects. And then finally, you've got your spin shot. Just use your joystick and it's going to turn and do a spin shot, gain a different type of effect for some creative videos. Let's keep it in follow. So that's your default mode, the one that you'll probably use the most. 
Underneath that is sport mode. If you turn that on, you can turn really quickly and really fast following sports action, kids, cars, things like that, fast moving action. You can also engage in sport mode with your trigger. You just click twice on the second click, hold it, I'm in sport mode. You can see it says active on the screen there, and then you can release and it's disabled. Then we've got your zoom speed. So that's how quickly you're gonna zoom in and out using the control on your joystick here. I like to keep it slow so that the zoom speed is relatively slow and smooth and cinematic. But if you wanna change that, then you can use those settings. Below that, you've got your control stick speed. That's your joystick. So at the moment, I'm on slow again. I like it on slow just so that it's more cinematic. But you can change that, so if I move that over to fast, for instance, then you can see it moves much quicker. You've got your control stick, control direction. Again, that's your joystick. So if you press that, you've got two choices. You can go to horizontal and vertical, moving left and right, up and down, or you can go to free, and that allows you to move on the diagonals as well. You can invert the controls, so up is down and down is up, left is right, right is left on your joystick. I keep mine at the default. And then you've got press M button, and you've got two choices. You've got photo, video, and quick menu. And that sets the function on the M button on your gimbal here. So if I'm on photo, video, and I press the M button, it swaps to photo, and then back again to video. Or if you, like me, want to set a quick menu up, choose the quick menu option, and now when I press the M button, you can see I've got some options on the left-hand side there all your modes, and on the right hand side, I can use the joystick to swap over. I can choose one of those four modes that we've just gone through. Press the M button again, and we're back into our main app. Gimbal auto calibration is useful. If you press the calibrate, stick it on a tripod, and then press start, it will take you through a calibration, and it makes sure it's nice and level and it will do that horizontally and vertically. If you still find you've got problems with your horizon not being absolutely straight, then click the horizontal gimbal adjustment, press OK, and then you can use the plus and minus buttons to spin the gimbal left or right. And it's just gonna change your horizontal there. I'm gonna reset that because mine's perfectly fine. And then on the right hand side, you've got this little hand icon. If you press that, that takes you into your gesture control. And what gesture control allows you to do is start recording and stop recording with a gesture. So if I turn that on and choose follow and shoot, follow and shoot will also use the active track. And to demonstrate that, all we're gonna do is triple click the trigger. That's gonna turn the camera around to myself. And then we use the gesture to start recording. Notice the little green box, that's the active track because I've turned that on and then it's gonna focus and track on your subject and you can use the joystick to position your subject exactly where you want on the screen. And we can use the gesture control again and we can turn off. Double click the trigger, that's gonna reset our gimbal. Triple click, I'm gonna turn the camera back around again. I'm gonna press that hand icon, just turn my gesture control off again. It does use more battery, by the way, so be careful of that. Top right hand side, you've got the little icon that you can manually turn your camera around. Again, I use the triple click on the trigger to do that, it's much simpler. And then in the bottom right hand side, you've got this little play icon, and that takes you to all your footage that you've just filmed, and you can go and view them. It'll also download that into your camera roll on an iPhone, or into your appropriate folder if you're on an Android. One thing to note with the resolution of frames per second is that you might not have all of the options within the Mimo app, especially if you're on Android. The Android doesn't support all of them, but you can still record using your native app. As long as you're connected to the Mimo app, in whatever filming mode that you want, go into your native app, choose 4K or whatever filming options that you want on your Android, and you can start recording. The gimbal is going to work perfectly fine and stabilize your footage. Although some of the functions, like some trigger functions, etc., may not work. But filming mode itself, absolutely fine. So let's explore a couple of the other options then. So we can go over to photo. And just like video, when you're in the photo mode, you just press the record button on your gimbal and it's going to take a photo or start video and stop video if you're in video mode. 
And then notice on the right hand side you've got a little self timer so you can set that if you want to take a picture of yourself or a group etc. Let's keep that off. Then you've got the pano mode, you can press the little icon and there's three options. The first is a 3x3 three three grid. And all we do is press the record button and then it will go through those nine images, quickly stitch them together to give you a panoramic. Choose the next option, that's 240. Again, press the record button. It can be on a tripod, I find it absolutely fine if you're just using it handheld in most situations, as long as you keep it relatively steady. And then you've got the final new option, which is called Clone Me. And with Clone Me, it gives you a little countdown timer. And the idea of that is that you're gonna set it on a tripod get into the picture or film someone and have them enter each frame as it goes through and then it will stitch it all together at the very end. So you jump into each of these frames and then it stitches it all together into a clone me. Here's how it looks. Then you've got your slow motion, so you can record footage in slow motion. And unlike the iPhone app where it starts normal speed, goes into slow and then ends normal speed, this will just record in slow motion all the way through. And there's a default setting there of eight times slow motion, 240 frames per second. Again though, if you want to use your native app on the iPhone or Android, choose whatever setting you want and it's still gonna stabilize your slow motion footage. DynaZoom is a new one. Let's show you a little example of how that works. But all you do is you choose move in, move out, and then press done. You draw a little box around your subject. And then when it finds that subject, you press start or record on your gimbal. And depending on the setting, walk towards or walk away. And it's like the Roy Schneider dual scene, if you've ever seen it, that you're walking in, but the background's actually getting further away instead of coming closer. And vice versa, if you walk out, the background gets closer. So it's a nice little additional effect that you can get to change up your footage a little bit. Here's an example for you. Next up is time-lapse, and there is a couple of options of time-lapse. So time-lapse is where you would put your camera on a tripod and press start, it's gonna record the scene and speed it all up and output a little file for you. At the top, you can change your interval time. So a short interval time, like half a second or one second is generally what I use. But if you've got fast moving water or people or clouds, for instance, you can use a longer like five, 10 seconds, etc. At the top there, it shows you, depending on the interval and the duration of the recording, how long the final output will be. So if I'm doing one second for five minutes, I'm gonna get a 10 second sped up clip. And on the right hand side, you've got this little icon that says path. And for that, set it on a tripod, position using the joystick, your first position, and press the plus button. Move your joystick to the next position, press your plus button. You can use up to four paths and go up and down as well. And when you're happy, you press the record, either on your gimbal or on a screen. It's gonna to flick to your first path and it's gonna start recording and slowly move through the path. So you get this motion time-lapse, which is really cool. You can end it at any time by pressing the stop. Let's show you exactly what one looks like. And then you've got hyperlapse. So if I press the hyperlapse, similar to time-lapse, the hyperlapse allows you to walk through a scene or a scenario whilst recording, and then it's gonna output a file that's sped up. You'll notice that you've got a couple of settings that you can change on the hyperlapse. So on the left-hand side, you can choose your speed from five times to 30 times. I generally find 30 times, 15 times is what I use. Very simple to use the hyperlapse. Once you're in it, press the record, start walking through the scene or scenario. You'll see it's recording in the top there. And when you're ready to finish, press the record button again, and it's gonna output that file. And you can press your play button to access that file, and that's gonna be saved onto your phone. And finally, you've got story mode. You can either scroll to the story mode or press the little S on screen, and that's gonna take you to some custom templates. 
and if you press start you'll see at the very bottom you've got four little rectangles with some times in seconds those are the clips that you're going to record and the story mode will stitch them all together it'll add transitions it'll add music and effects and it will create a little movie file of a few seconds long that you can stick straight onto social media or share if you're in a hurry let's show you exactly how that works so you choose a template so if i go into my s again let's choose let's choose fashion because that's got some effects on it so all we do is we press the record button you see this little countdown icon it's moving the camera and then when that's finished press the record to skip to the next and then record to start recording if at any time you want to retake the footage press the retake button choose where you want to retake it and it will retake that image at the very end it's giving you a preview you can press save as draft or retake still any images so you press your preview button you then press your next button you've got watermark and end card disable those otherwise i'll overwrite your video with those and press save and that's going to save it to your phone ready for publishing now if you want to publish straight away you've got this little option comes up that says save and post and if you press that you can then publish it to where you like i'm going to press the little cross button that's still going to save my video but it won't publish it and then you'll find that with all of your other movies saved to your phone and don't forget you've got a link here to a playlist of all of the gimbal tutorials check that out thanks for watching guys really really do appreciate support hope to see you next time take care